Do we want to talk about Apple next? I guess. I, I don't know. Everything that's here with Apple is kind of, you know, it, it, it's... It's, it's we, just a it, Steve Jobs. Yeah, it's, it, so. we, we covered that last week. So, it, it's we've babbled here for 15 minutes. I I do the Kindle review, except I, I don't... Uh... uh I, I don't know. It's, oh, I do need to make a retraction. I screwed up when I said on the 4x3 screens last week. A, apparently I don't know my left hand from my right hand because I'm calling... Yeah, horizontal this, from vertical. Yeah, yes, yes. I, I, I call this horizontal. For those of you who are normal people, I meant vertical. And the other thing is I went and, che <laughs> I went and checked the specs. It turns out it's... A 1600 by 1200 screen so it's the same number of lines as like your high-end screens today but still I prefer a 1200 line screen to a uh, 4 by 3 ratio to the 768 screens that are popping up everywhere uh. Well, and even on the 16 by 9s the natives are 800. It's just, ugh, I can't stand it. I want 4 by 3 monitors back for laptops, damn it. Yeah, they're, worth, they're wearing gold if people can make them. No, but they need to be a modern one. Like, the only ones I can find. Uh, the, I know, if they can make one with, like, with an, a modern day video or AMD card. Uh, you know, I'd sell for modern AMD or Intel CPU with the onboard graphics. Let's yeah. settle for that. As long as it was priced reasonably. Even if it wasn't priced reason reasonably, you know, still. I'd be willing to pay an extra 50 bucks for it. But that's me. <laughs> that's, most people wouldn't. They'd go... I'm just saying, you know, like, it's not really being sold to niche market. Well, it's, it's a niche market because it's been, hasn't been sold yet. It, you know? it, no, it... I... I, I I don't know what it's in there. It's gonna explode. You I, know? I, I yes. don't know what your opinion on the four by three screens is, James. My opinion is the quote unquote. I'm four by three right now. Yeah, the quote well, unquote. I prefer sixteen by nine screens. On on your laptop, or on your desktop. On my laptop. Okay. Why is that? Why? Why? Well, watch it, videos, right? It, yeah. Explain this to me. I have to understand this because sixteen by nine screens on my laptop drive me nuts. I can't see enough of the stuff on the screen. Because, yeah, I have to read on that. Uh, when I watch a video, it can take up the full area of yeah, the Yeah, video, so but do you use it for work? Hello? Yeah? Do you use it for work? That's for video. That's because 16, 16 by 9 is the video standard for viewing movies and playing games. Yeah, so but what about what actual reading? reading? Like, a laptop is meant to be typing and doing work. It's not a toy. Okay, y'all are talking over each other. One of you pick. <laughs> okay, you said yours. Say what you said again, James. Anyway, it, already I can take up my whole screen and view any media I want, and it uh, it, it works a lot better than 4x3 because I don't get anything squished at all nice and proportioned and when I'm working I don't see the problem with it it's not like I have any less real estate on it than I would before I have way less real estate I guess it depends what type of work you're doing uh, like what kind of work are you primarily doing can you read an entire page of like a visual novel or something or can you like read if you like if you put a page of a PDF or a word document on there and you shrink it down where you can see the whole page can you read the text? Yeah. Okay, I'm officially an old fart now because I have to like stick my eye. Well, maybe it's because I wear glasses and I have sign. But I have to like stick my eyeballs like three inches from the screen to read that at that size. And I'm on a four by three. I never have a problem reading it. You know. Well, you're all funny, Daddy. Well, I prefer the wideness because I like putting stuff on the side of each other, a bunch of stuff. I generally never have one application take up the full screen. I'm having my documentation over here, I'm having Emacs on one side, and I'm having some other program on the other side. It's all these different things. 
See, it's like when I the only time I'm doing side by side is when I'm uh, writing uh, like code. Like I have the CSS over here on the HTML over here, or the P or the PHP script over here, and the HTML over here, so I can mess with them both at the same time. But yeah, what's great for code, and it just ha so happens that that's most of what I do on a computer, so it's great for me. Well, and see, that's actually why I want the four by three. Because in that, I care about how many lines of the code I can see at once. And more often than not, I wind up with a problem of I, like, I'm having to scroll up and down more than I want because I can't see enough of the lines of code at the same time. If I needed more width, I mean, I'm using KDE. I just, I just split the screen top and bottom instead of side and side. Same diff to me. But on a, then I definitely need the extra vertical lines of a 4x3 to do that. <laughs> so I guess it's just a preference. Honestly, I think this is one of those things that it's like where does where do the tabs belong? Do you want tree style browsing or do you want all your tabs on the top? So basically you're an old fuddy duddy. I've become an old fuddy duddy. We've established this. I need to just change my Google name to old fuddy duddy. I don't think Google will let me. <laughs> They'll say that's not a real name, but I've been called that more than my more than my Pseudonym or the sex. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, let's see. What else? We covered Google. We what about the iOS emulator? You know, I know nothing about that. All I know about that is it doesn't really work well, and it. it I I would not write my iOS applications testing them on that emulator. I would test them in iOS, but that's me. Yeah, same here. It's just basically a fork of QEMU. Okay. Uh, anything else to add, James? Not to that, no. Or to anything. Are we done? I guess, I guess we are. Uh, unless you want to do your Kindle review or whatever. I, 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 I'll do that in a separate video unless y'all want to hash in on it. Uh, uh, cause so, I'm sure I'm sure sure. Q&A as long as it's still here, you know. <laughs> We can do Ask Nash. Hold on. What did you say, James? I said, okay, before it's all off, I do have a question for you guys. Sure. Go ahead. All right. Let's forget all the things that Macs do and Apple does that might not be so good, that might not be so good, walled gardens, lock-ins, you know, yeah. dumbifying a computer, stuff like this. Fine. Uh, what okay. do you think, in a personal aspect, about Steve Jobs' full history to where he is now? That. Uh, right. Go, you go first, can we? So what? You go first. Well, I'm, I'm thinking about it. Uh, how about you go first? Uh, okay. Um... I don't like the direction he's taken some of the stuff in the industry, but you said setting all that aside, you have to acknowledge that whether you agree or disagree with Steve Jobs, he is a force of will, and that he will drag everything down whatever he thinks the path is. Kicking and screaming. Yeah, kicking and screaming. If he's right, it works out. If he's wrong, he annoys a lot of people. Uh, and on some of that thing, it's personal preference, so he usually managed to do both. But he definitely had an influence on the industry. That's uh, his preferable practice that appeals to baby boomer. Baby I, 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 I wonder why. I, 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 think, I think he is an integral part of the personal computing world we live in today, uh, based on what he was doing in the late 70s and the early 80s. However... I uh, so and I would never deny that. Uh, however, I do not think he's the sole part. I think he's contributed to the industry, but I'm never going to put him on the pedestal. Some people like to put him on, uh, and you know, uh, what uh, as a person, he's a lot more enjoyable when he's actually being fully honest and not being the Steve Jobs persona, just being candor. Like the CEO of Next, where he says, yeah. Yeah, it's probably great out of steel. Yeah, like it's a, Steve Jobs is an honest, candor person. He, he's a smart guy. He 
he does think in his own way he does innovate uh, but his innovation is different it's not actually creating it he, he's a marketing genius he knows how to put things in in a shiny package that the consumer will swallow he's a genius at that and th th I mean that is probably his biggest contribution is his understanding of that he doesn't in that regard like I said, sometimes he's right, sometimes he's wrong, but he doesn't... No, it's not his charisma, it's that he's stubborn. There, there's a phrase I learned when I was really young, and it happens to be true. When, you, when you're stubborn, if you're right, you know, the, the rest of the world thinks you're mad, but if you're right, it's okay. When you're wrong, because that's your nature, you're just going to go against the grain and do whatever the hell you want regardless. When you're wrong, it, it's your worse than in the end it'll hurt you and that's pretty much the person Steve Jobs is he wants to go here and he doesn't care and that's both a good thing and a bad thing because when he's right it just in spite of every trend saying no it should be this he goes no fuck it it should be this but he's he's wrong sometimes too but he, he has that stubbornness and that I'm about to be an honest person he's, most, he's mostly honest when he's not really on where it doesn't really affect him. Like, he, like, would sugarcoat things, you know? But, yeah, no, he, like, he, no, like, like... Like I said, I don't like the Steve Jobs persona. The, the Steve Jobs of Apple, especially of the last few years, is a persona. It's the app... It's, it's the persona of Apple marketing. Steve Jobs is an actual person. If you get, if you get your hands and watch some of those candid interviews where he's just he's being candid it's entirely informal he's not CEO oh, that's of, Steve, of a, Jobs, CEO, Steve, uh, Steve Jobs is Steve Jobs yeah and, and uh, that person actually isn't a prick you know it's like <laughs> that person should come out more often you know it's yeah. Like, yeah I guess you just hide in the closet somewhere like Tom Cruise <laughs> uh, anything to add to that coming yeah he's <laughs> Well, I haven't, I haven't had any commentary to what you're saying, but pretty much. Okay. I'm just saying, like, he's basically most honest when he's not the Steve Jobs, as in the uh, the, the the prophet Steve Jobs. When he's not the prophet, he's just. Yeah, you know. well, yeah, but we were we were supposed to be setting the appleness aside, and we kind of brought it back in. You brought it up, James. What about your two cents on that? So I personally. Uh, look up to Steve Jobs, not necessarily in a tech way, but in the fact that he is very stubborn and that he, because he was so stubborn, because he did have his dream, you know, Apple's his baby and stuff, that he did get so far and become such a powerful person, and I do respect power. Uh, I may not like him in a technical aspect, and I may not like his OS, but I respect people that get in power. No, I mean, you have to acknowledge, even if you hate Apple, even if you hate some of the things it's done to the industry, like you said, setting all that aside, you have to acknowledge Steve Jobs. You can't, you can't pretend, you can't, it's hard to minimalize his contribution to things. It's just, but, you know, be candor about what his contribution actually is. You know, he, he's, he's a very good, stubborn businessman who has great insight into marketing and that type of innovation. He, he is very good at that. He was a perfect contrib uh, contribution to Wozniak and, and a lot of other things. Like, if you say, one, if you say, say, uh, say Apple's the best one time and you change my mind, no, Apple sucks now. You know, like, you know, they just don't believe what you said from one, one time because of the marketing and the way they make stuff, you know. Well, no, and but it's all nice and thin. It's perfect, you know. Well, no, and we, we, we and like this is talking about Steve Jobs the person, not Steve Jobs the persona. But you know, like I said, he's a, he's a salesman. He's a marketing. You know, he's 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 great at that. You know, well, we, 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 his bit, marketing skills. Yeah, at, you, you know, know Bid and I were talking about this. There are probably five people on the planet who could stand on stage one minute and say this is the thing, and then two months later, completely contradict everything they said two months ago. That thing sucks. Yeah, and, and, and they say it in a way that's elegant enough that you're like, you're right. Okay, that, 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 that does suck now. It's like, and that, 
the, We're just full of the people. <laughs> uh, well, I, I, I shouldn't name some of the other ones because I'll get in trouble, but it's like... Oh, uh, you know that personally. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I just... um. <laughs> so if you had to remove one from their impact, would you remove Steve Jobs or Bill Gates? Sadly, you do not get to remove both. I don't get to remove both. Oh, uh, damn it. Uh, well, uh, okay. We're sorry. Be, 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 okay, I, I have to explain this answer. Okay, uh, the reality is uh, I think they're, they have symbiotic relationships. Um, uh, assuming things, assuming the same yeah. things would happen and the same insights would happen with the other one gone and so forth. I would remove Steve Jobs because why Steve Jobs is a genius at marketing and he is a genius at putting things in the right package and giving insight into some of that stuff. He has never been able to disregard the idea of a total package. It's just it's he he he's he can't make that leap. And Bill Gates, this is why I said it's like they're they're kind of symbiotic to other. Bill Gates uh, made that leap. He made that leap initially of the package is meaningless, it's the piece. Uh, and that changed... Well, if you have the piece, you get someone else to build the package for you. Exactly. You package, it was, so. it was, and it, it provided more than one package and so on and, and different flavors and so forth. You know that, uh, And that gave way to a lot of things. That, more than anything, is why we have the computer industry we have today that we don't have the mentality of a because package. Because if we didn't, we probably wouldn't have removal of video cards, like the whole IBM mentality where... Yeah, it's like know, my, 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 my guess would be it. my guess would be computers would not be built on things like ITX, extended ATX, micro ITX, and so on. They wouldn't be built on those form factors, PCI cards, yada yada. You'd have to be a really technical person to do the things you do building a desktop PC, because the industry would have never really just shifted that way fully. I don't think... Well, what about it, Commodore or Atari or something? What they have done the, the way they've done it like they, they've done it in the past? In the ultimate past? I, just, I, like, I, I personally think if somebody like Bill Gates hadn't come along and thrown away the idea of the total package, the computer industry today would be in the same place the television industry solutions are today, where why there are some exceptions to this rule, for the most part, it's by our really expensive total solution thing where you're kind of stuck in the box we envisioned. Yeah, you can't just say, okay, I want to get rid of C-SPAN and C-SPAN 2. Give me two other channels that I want, please. Well, it's not just that. It's also the stuff you use to produce traditional television and so forth. It, 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 it's it's not anywhere near as modular as it could be. You're kind of in a... Do you think that if Apple wasn't there, it might So you have that orange mentality. You get, what you, you get what you want and nothing more, right? Well, no, see, that's the thing. That's why I said I have to explain this. And like I said, they're symbiotic. Um, I, uh, because Apple got a lot of their stuff from Park, and Microsoft noticed uh, took note of Park too, and even before Apple computers ever existed, Microsoft had already adopted the mentality of screw the package, we make the thing, uh, and I mean that that was what they were doing in the late seventies before Apple as a company ever existed before they saw they were Well they didn't really care about they, the package. No, like, they didn't we, care we about the package. Part of the package. But you like go ahead, you like we we can make your package better, you yeah. know? Yeah, what Microsoft did was they provided software solutions to make other people's packages more. And Microsoft understood that mentality. That's why Microsoft is the became the company Microsoft became. They weren't focused on the package. They were focused on being the little key nugget you needed to make your package work. They were even doing that for Apple until the two companies got in a feud. However, I agree that Steve Jobs is equally as important because, like I said, Park made the personal computer. They made a lot of the technology that Apple used in the Macintosh. They made a lot of the GUI technology. What Apple came in and did was 
at the right time and the right cycle of Moore's Law when the price points were not cheap but obtainable come in and market it right which is equally as important to getting us where we are today as what Microsoft did. The reality is, you know, we have this... So Apple popularized a personal computer, but... Uh, it's, it's but they didn't, but they didn't invent right? it. They, but they didn't yeah. invent it, they didn't do any of that. And at the end of the day, we're playing a what if. Would no other company have ever done that if Apple had That's the machine. Yeah, it, it should. Uh, all I need is my thing wongler. Does anybody know where my thing wongler is? It's over there. <laughs> it's right after the smell scope. Okay. But no, the, the, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it's, you know, the, 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 the purists go, oh, Microsoft invented everything. Apple stole from Microsoft because Microsoft was making, you know, Microsoft made, made the version of BASIC that ran the Apple II. Oh, no, 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 Apple invented everything because they made the Macintosh, you know, they didn't get anything from Park. Microsoft stole Windows from Apple. You know, this is the pop. Yeah, the, 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 the reality is... Uh, the shape of the current ecosystem is, tie, is tied both to Xerox, Microsoft, Apple, and several other niche companies that died over the 80s that laid the seed work for what is the modern computer industry. And the same thing's going on again right now. It's constantly going on in the tech industry. There's little startup companies you've never heard of that... I just hope we can stay away from the pack in a deal. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, and it wasn't that long ago nobody had heard of Facebook or Google. Now they all but dominate certain sex, certain sections of the tech industry. You know, it's you know, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, it's you know, it's like it's, there's nothing to stop somebody from coming up and doing that again. That's, but yeah. All right. Uh, unless anyone has any more questions, I think we're ready to sign off. Okay. We apologize for the lagging nature of this show, and I really apologize that my internet went out mid-thing. Like, uh, we'll do the Kindle review in one of the other videos this week, because I did promise to do that when we got back. It's, it, 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 we need to start doing more hardware reviews. Okay, peace out all.